Cloud computing has changed the way we do everything, from communication to storage to work to social media, just about everything is making its way through some server somewhere. Even thermostats and refrigerators are sending data to massive server farms. This tremendous uptick in data storage and usage has led to companies investing in huge warehouses of servers just to maintain and process all of it. In 2018, Microsoft began a bold attempt at rethinking conventional data storage. What if, instead of acres of land being dedicated to warehouses, the data could be sunk to the sea floor? And thus began Project Natick. While the idea came about years earlier, Microsoft plunged its new underwater data center to the sea floor off the coast of Scotland in 2018. Then, two years later, in the summer of 2020, they hoisted it back up to study the results. After blasting off some barnacles and clearing the giant capsule off, they were supremely satisfied with the results. But just what exactly makes this method better than the warehouses? And what has Microsoft learned since bringing the data center back up to land? In today's video, we're going to take a look at what this experiment means for the future of data. What are the benefits of an underwater data center? At first glance, sinking a data center to the ocean floor may not seem like a particularly excellent idea. After all, it's considerably more difficult to reach the data center if anything goes wrong or any maintenance is needed. But the difficulty reaching this data center is actually an asset, not a liability. Traditional data centers are susceptible to many issues associated with human activity and environments. The chief concern is temperature regulation. Data centers use enormous amounts of energy to maintain a consistent temperature. The oxygen and particulate matter in the air can contribute considerably to corrosion, resulting in failure. And lastly, the basic mistakes of humans bumping, dropping, and nudging servers can also get in the way of the center's operation. By sinking this data center to the ocean floor and eliminating the human and oxygen concerns, you already have a more efficient system. When you combine those benefits with the naturally cool temperature of the sea floor, reducing the need for costly temperature control systems, you get an excellent solution to an ever-expanding necessity. There are other long-term benefits to sinking a data center as well. Traditional data centers require costly security to safeguard the machinery and the data against those who may attempt to break in. The underwater center features a far more natural safeguard of being extremely difficult to reach and therefore safer and more cost-effective in the long run. Lastly, land-based data centers suffer from the possibilities of natural disasters such as earthquakes, wildfires, tornadoes, thunderstorms. The team needed to wait for specific conditions to submerge the container, but once it was submerged, there was no fear of natural disasters interrupting operation. The use of clean energy sources is another exciting development in the project. Scotland's Orkney Islands were chosen for the experiment because the area features a power grid that is supplied entirely by renewable energy, primarily from wind farms. There's a backup fiber optic power line in the event of emergency, but the renewable energy sources proved reliable during the duration of the test. These benefits are all amazing in theory. But now that the data center has been brought back to the surface and studied, how did it actually work out? Did all of these visions of a better tomorrow actually come true? What did Microsoft learn from Project Natick? After two years, the capsule was retrieved and given a quick power wash. Then the engineers went to work studying the capsule and the data. The initial results were extremely promising. The team deduced that sinking a data center was eight times more reliable than housing the same data in land-based centers. A few servers failed and were taken offline, but otherwise, the pod remained fairly untouched during the time. A theory surrounding the success points to the use of dry nitrogen in the capsule. The theory points that this is a more hospitable environment than oxygen and thus maintains the server's integrity more consistently. 
The cost of maintenance is also a big win. Land-based data centers receive nearly daily care and check-in. These submerged centers are designed to be sunk for five whole years before being brought up for a full top-to-bottom checkup. The project is still ongoing, and at this time, Microsoft has yet to reveal much more in the way of specific details. The company remains extremely positive and optimistic about the project and has largely considered it a great success. Now, this all sounds excellent for Microsoft and possibly for the environment, but how exactly does this affect you? How Project Natic Affects Consumers Microsoft is thinking globally when it comes to data solutions. While the previously mentioned benefits are definite incentives, there are, in fact, benefits that directly affect consumers. Chiefly, a sizable reduction in latency, resulting in a superior user experience. What is latency? Latency is how long it takes data to travel between the source and the destination. The farther the physical distance between those two points, the longer it takes to load something online. Approximately half of the world's population lives within 200 kilometers of an ocean. Placing a data center underwater then puts all that data considerably closer to large populations than it would out in the middle of nowhere. The latency for streaming or playing video games or queuing up browser pages could be cut nearly in half with more emphasis placed on these closer submerged data centers. Another key benefit to consumers is rapid provisioning. Cloud computing is growing at rapid rates. There is a foreseeable future where growth outpaces capacity. Microsoft's underwater data centers can be completed start to finish in just 90 days. This rapid response time will help keep up with consumer growth and usage, ensuring that there's always rapid response to market demands. Lastly, these underwater data centers are sustainable. Microsoft has placed a sizable emphasis on integrating the future of cloud computing with sustaining the Earth's environment. These underwater data centers draw from local, clean energy sources, produce zero waste, and are fully recyclable. The containers and internal contents are made from fully recyclable materials so that when the data center reaches the end of its life, it can be transformed into something new. By partnering with local green energy sources, these data centers can be fully sustainable and result in zero carbon emissions. These data centers are self-sustaining, possibly for as long as 10 years, so there will be no need for humans to venture out and possibly generate more waste in maintenance regularly. Microsoft is not only investing in the future of cloud computing with these data centers, it's also investing in the future of the planet. They're finding solutions to multiple problems without sacrificing quality anywhere in the process. What will the future of data look like? So does this mean that the future of data is entirely underwater? And is it the end of large on-land server farms? Probably not. While the results are promising, it will still be a while before we see this scale enough to support the growth of data and cloud computing. There will probably continue to be new on-land data centers built, but they may become smaller and more carefully targeted. Project Natic has opened the door to more options. Instead of a constant reliance on large land-based data centers, we may be able to start using both and slowly scale back land operation. There will be sort of a right time and place for land and a right time and place for ocean-based data storage. Major coastal cities could benefit extremely from nearby submerged data centers, while landlocked rural areas may still rely on land-based warehouses in closer proximity. The combination of these technologies working together promises a better future of computing for everyone. The lessons learned from the underwater experiment also present new ideas for land-based data centers. Engineers may consider how to eliminate some of the human-associated issues with land-based centers and incorporate some of the success of the underwater centers, such as the dry nitrogen in the air. So it may still be a few years before we see Microsoft sink more and more of these data centers, but eventually we could be experiencing lower latency and 
more sustainable computing all around the world.